this is Kian Success. I'm Mr. Big Up Dancing Fear. And they are only cool. Put, 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 put it down. Put it down, put it down. Tell them dancing clear, I put it down. Sweet. They dance from the corner and we put it on Showing at the area and we put it on awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome YouTubers to another quick fire interview here on Don Sinclair. So go and big up yourself Don Sinclair and big up yourself from Ruli Cooley. I'll be your host today, Charlie T, yeah? So now people, who do we have here? Who do we have here? Today we have one of the most special guests that you could ever have. The history is great. The knowledge is fantastic. Trust me, I just, it's a pleasure introducing the one and only Mona Dad. Welcome. Welcome to YouTube. Thank welcome, you for having welcome. me. Welcome. So, what we do, we have this little quick fire interview. But you know, it's going to be a little bit different today, you know. I feel like we're going to conversate today, you know. This is going to have a, a lovely talk and we're going to learn about the history of Studio One intimately. Well, this is going to be the old truth and nothing but the truth. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect. So, Mona, please tell us a little bit of your, like, your upbringing, how it all kind of started from you as little and, you know what I mean? Um, I was born in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, there were four siblings, my older sister Vivian. Okay. Um, she was not Coxon's daughter. Okay. Um, there's Claudia, the oldest one, mm -hmm. Clement. Um, Clement Seymour Dodd Jr. and myself. Um, we were living in Jamaica up until 1964. Okay. Um, my mum said she was pining after her children, so she decided to come back for myself and my older sister, Vivian. Okay. And she was gonna leave Junior and Claudia with my father. Okay. When she came down to Jamaica, quarrel started. <laughs> so, she decided, she says, well, you sell dog? I uh, some puss get sell. She's, like, she's not giving away her children. So she then decided she's taking everybody. Okay. So she took Junior out of school. She got Claudia back and decided this is it. She's bringing us all back to England. Let me interject quickly. So you was in school in Jamaica? Yes. At the time. What, what school did you go to? No, when you say what school I went to, mm -hmm. my fa when my mum left yeah. to go to England, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I was living with my nan, that's my mum's side. Yes. And my mum worked, my nan worked, so there was no one really to take care of me. So my dad then came and took me, and um, I was then around my father and with Claudia and Junior. But what he did not, my dad is a no-nonsense man. Right. And with Claudia being the older, she was at school, cared for herself more, where I was a baby. And he didn't like me being picked up by any and anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So he decided to take me to Buff Bay okay. with his aunt, that was Aunt Alice. So I lived with Aunt Alice until the age of four, probably pushing five, right. when my mum came back for us. So I remember father taking me down to Buff Bay and then I returned back to Kingston. And um, the times that I remember now when my mom came, there was like disagreements. And um, the one occasion I do remember when we were younger, Claudia told us to call Miss Dodd, that's Norma Dodd, okay. to call her mom because we were there, so yeah. we should call her mom. Mm. So we used to call her mom as young children. Yeah. So um, I remember when mom came now, and we were at my mom's mother, my nan, and father came with Miss Dodd in the car, and um, he, he said to us that Norma's outside in the car. So as a child, I went out and I called her Nor Norma. So she was mad, I went back in and she told my dad that I called her Norma. So, well, father went back in, had words with my mum was mad and said, she's not the mother, you know, she's, yeah. you know. So coming back to England now, mum took us, she was very jealous. She said, why she left my father is that he, she built the, the sound system with him. Okay. Not that she built the sound system, but she worked along with his mother. Okay, yeah. Doing the cooking, serving behind the bar. Yeah. And my older sister would let me know that she remember when 
her mum wouldn't babysit Claudia and her used to be in a back room where there's a mattress and stuff so they could sleep on yeah. and they'd be enjoying the party <laughs> okay. but mum used to cook the food and serve the drinks and that's what they made the money on where, where exactly was that where, where which part of Jamaica was Jamaica? Kingston wherever he kept his dancing oh, okay Can you remember what, what kind of that street or, or name of the club I wouldn't remember because oh, remember I was a baby I'm only going off oh, okay. what my sister said or my yeah, mum would yeah. tell us okay. what happened and how insanely jealous she was yeah. because the fact she said she loved him and he loved her they met each other before he had anything so she helped build she helped to build, build where the world don't remember that okay. or people are not mentioning it so as the child of my mom and the child of my mom, let me let it be known mm -hmm. yuna had a big influence building the first stage of this entity yeah and um when she left, father was very upset. He said he would never marry unless she married. Yeah. Mom got married in about 67, 60, something around that time. And then he married Miss Norma Dodd. Okay. And um, from that now, we grew up as kids, always kept in touch with my father because we'd write. Or when he came to England, he would just turn up and I would be so excited. I remember one Sunday, I was in the house and I saw this, looked out the window, I saw, and I went, Mom, Father, Father, because we called him Father. All right. That's what we grew up to call him Father. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was so excited to see my father that Sunday, I was so happy. And um, he came and he decided that he was on the same for us and he booked three, because at the time, he had the label, Banana and there's another label in England, Bamboo. Oh, okay. And he had a travel agency. Wow. Where, I suppose, whatever Junior did was to my father's liking. Mm -hmm. So the travel agency and the whole thing closed down, but the fares were booked through the travel agency. Yeah. Then he decided to change my ticket to leave me with Mom and take Junior and Claudia. But I think his plan was to take Junior and Claudia and keep them and keep them oh, okay so mom knew the plot mom knew the plot <laughs> so she booked her fare I said no I'll take my picnic now <laughs> so <laughs> she yeah, then none of it. she ain't having none of it <laughs> I remember the time it was I tell you the news that used to play it was Johnny or Too Bad I remember that oh, okay. cycle it's around that era okay and um she went back I was really sad because it was around the Christmas yeah and I had to cook Christmas dinner at the age of 12. All right, so mu music now. What's your uh, early memories of, 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 of music? My early memories, well, I, I used to love to dance. Okay. Wow, could I scare some man? <laughs> and I remember Bonanza Ska. Um, but I remember, I remember like um, Stitch, the early days, we remember Nan, my father's mom yeah. had a, a place called Nanny's Corner. And I remember being there and there was a stitch. You know, the one that used to... Yeah. And I remember this yeah. man had this funny face. As children, you, yes, yeah. we were very rude. We used to laugh after him. Yeah, as kids do, man. We used to laugh after poor Stitch. God forgive me, but we did. And um, I remember Delbro Wilson, because he was young. Okay. Um, I remember some of the older artists. And also, as a young child, I re vaguely remember Sam Cooke. Because okay. I always felt that I knew Sam Cooke. Wow. Because it was my nan's favorite artist. And I remember Sam Cooke came to my nan's house, not my father's mom, my mom's mom. Your mom, okay. And later on, I realized that Sam Cooke had recorded on the Studio One. So what I remembered was correct. Okay. Yeah. And I just remember my dad used to play the ska music. And I remember going to Ward Theatre where there was um, Bunny, the Mob Marley and the Wailers. There was mm -hmm. the Scatterlights. There was Dan Drummond's. And there was Margarita, the belly dancer. Okay. Because I remember going home and showing my mom how Margarita danced because I used to like to mimic the yeah, people yeah. and the next day she died Don Jones had killed oh, her. Yeah. yeah yes he was insanely jealous okay. when he was sick okay. but you know for anyone who didn't know my father used to help Don Jones a lot bail him out I think he did try to look after a lot of the artists yeah. where a lot of them would give him bad name 
but any intentions he has was good. Mm -hmm. It was very good. It wasn't for any money game. It was something that he felt. He was trying to build for the Jamaican people. Yeah. He was very passionate about it, um, being kept black home. And Sonia had offered him a large amount of money, which he, he said to me out of his own words, because I asked him about it. And he said, it's not about the money. And he says, it's a lifetime of work where he was basically fed up of getting the, was it the reward, the, the what is it, the, um, the reward? The awards, but not, not the, the rewards. rewards. Okay, yeah, the we, awards, but not the rewards. Well, yeah, 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 you know, because he'd worked so hard. And um, let me interject there a little. So, what, what do you feel your, your your father was doing at that time for the artists? Because it was it was it was greater than music, right? Bigger yeah. than music. What he was he was actually giving. What what do you what do you feel your father was giving to these artists? Well, I think he was building them a career, not realizing himself. Yeah, and he was very much, as I said before, a no nonsense person. So mm -hmm. he weren't into the the nonsense music. It was more music of value, culture, yeah. politics. You know, based on combating the violence and stuff like that. Yeah, because like the simmer down was all about the violence that was going on in Jamaica and then one love was always all about love yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and most if you listen to most of the music it was very spiritual and uplifting and it, it, it helped you out of your struggles yeah. yeah yeah okay so after like I know your father's what 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 contribution do you feel your, like studio one has had on the impact of the culture of Jamaica right. or you know what I mean? Because uh, it's the, to me, it's the greatest music ever created. That's the greatest period in time of music for me personally. You want to really hear the truth? I love to hear the Studio truth. Studio One is a foundation of Jamaica, because that music started from ska, mm -hmm. rocksteady, reggae. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of people would like to claim it as Trojan, but they bought it. It's, it's all rubbish. Father was a foundation, and the father of this industry and everybody followed and without this music today Jamaica wouldn't be a body because that founded Jamaica because when you go worldwide you're going to hear people go reggae music nice beautiful and they'll go Jamaicans happy people because I've been to India I've traveled many places yeah and they see my passport Jamaican the talk of Jamaica have been happy people and that is coming from the music yeah and um, yes, I do feel that he's played a massive part and he's not getting the respect that he should get. Because they're saying Bobby's the reggae, or they're making believe mm -hmm. Bob Marley's the founder of reggae or whatever. Bob Marley was the most popular um, uh, reggae artist. He wasn't yeah. the best, because there was other people in my eyes that I would see that were more spiritual, I could catch a vibes, you know. Not saying Bob's music wasn't good, it was good, but um, it was just Chris embarked on Bob. And you know, there was a situation where- Who Chris, are Chris, we talking about? Chris Blackwell. Okay. Well, Chris Blackwell took the lighter skin and caused a problem with Bunny and Peter. Okay. Right, mm -hmm. where up till this day, Chris Blackwell paid my dad before he died a portion of money and he was left a promissible note where my father talks about and that he was to get the rest but after my father died Chris Blackwell did a massive run out and um, at the said time I know Bunny argues about money that he owes him so when everybody's talking about Chris is the richest man he's the richest man of other people's money yeah. he's made up of Jamaican money you know, and if this man was probably putting some of this money back into Jamaica, I think it would be good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, there's a lot of, you know, as I said, Bob Marley wasn't the greatest, but he was the most popular okay. artist. Well, yeah. he's made a, spent a lot of money. And when people spend money and um, pushing it into people's face, and you keep, you know, people then become or believe yeah. that is so. 
It's a shame, man. That's but there's shame. lots of great other artists before Bob Marley. Yeah, 100%. There was lots yeah. more before so, Bob Marley. So did you, um, did you, did you, uh, you got memories of, of, of hanging out with some of these artists as a little girl, meeting some of these artists as a little girl? When I was little, remember, I, I was only three, four. Okay. <laughs> you know, but I do remember Delroy Wilson and some of the other guys. Okay. Because I was a little girl, and that's why my father took me to the country, because it was like being a little baby around them. They were picking me up and put me, you know. So yeah. father took me to the country with his aunt, Aunt Alice, and there I lived for about three years. Okay. And I came back to Kingston when my mum came back to give me apples. Yeah. But um, I would only remember, like, I remember Delroy a lot. Okay. Because my sister Claudia used to be fond of him. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember Delroy. Delroy was the golden vocals, man. Yeah, because yeah. he was around the same age as my sister. So okay. I do remember okay. Delroy and, and like, King's Teach and a few other people. Okay. But I was young. Oh, yeah. That's great, that's great. Um, I was going to say, though, what, what, was, what was the relationship? Can you, can you remember or, or, or your, can you remember anything that your father said or your mother said, the relationship between your pups and, um, and you agreed? Well, what I remember, father said that he went away um, to do the field work. Yeah. And he came back with his tunes, the music, the R&B that he had bought and had this great idea to mm. bring back and play for his people. And um, at the time, my nan had a place called Nanny's Corner where it was a bar and also a food, like a diner. And Jew could play the merengue and little things, you know, the music of that time. Yeah. On, the, on that. And father come, he was younger than, my father's younger than Jew Creed. Yeah. And um, Jew was an ex policeman. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, um, your mum and Nan was close, yeah. you know, they had a fr friendship and father started to play the Moringa, that, that, no, the R&B on his system. Yeah. And then he had the idea to now take that music out and form his own sound system. And that's how the music took off from okay. there. Yeah. Okay, so Duke Reed had, had, a, had, a, had a direct influence on, 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 your, on, your, on your father? I don't see why he, had, he didn't have a direct influence. He was just playing, um, I think it's the other way around. Okay. My father became the influence well, around everybody. <laughs> so bad. that's right, yeah. because then as a young youth, he then went out with his sound system and then started mm -hmm. to create these vibes and yeah. bringing back the tune. And a lot of people know he'd scratch off the name and <laughs> rename the tune and okay. nobody would know what this <laughs> okay. donkey shuffle was. Okay. And um, Duke, what my mom said, there was one of the time where Duke could send man to, um, We'd gone to mash up my father's yeah. dance and set up to mash up his things and you know, father used to get really angry and I think that's where the friendship kinda of broke down. Yeah, kinda of broke down. But my father, no matter who was fighting yeah. against him, he still talked to them. Okay. He still did business with them. Okay. But he was one step ahead. He was always one step ahead. I used to say, Father, why do the right bad about you? I said Alton Ellis and he says Alton Ellis he said but them see a man come back and said Mr. Dad Mr. Dad more at her money come we make a tune yeah but if somebody's going to rip you off why are you going to keep going back true 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 you know mm. and um I remember when my dad no it was my nan that, no it was my father that had passed and was down at the studios <clears throat> and I was interviewing some of the guys yeah. at the studio Alton Ellis was saying he was so sad that it ever happened mm -hmm. and this, I think it was a no 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 tune he went and sold it and he had no right to do it okay because back in the days my father gave him a choice um do you want such and such or you just want to sell it they would always want to sell the music outright okay of and then 30 yeah 30 40 years later they then said you only paid them five pound or two pound which in 40 years ago two pound a lot of money mm -hmm. and even today in Jamaica if you have two pound or five pound yeah because the basic wage wage in Jamaica is what 50 pounds a week okay so, and this is now 2019 so imagine what two pounds or five yeah. pound was 
40, 50 years ago yeah. was a lot of money. Yeah. And I, he didn't cheat anybody, as some of the people would have it to say. He was quite fair and honest with everybody. But um, <clears throat> um, when people were thinking he was making loads of money, it's not that he, but he was being robbed by Chris. He wasn't getting no royalties in, nothing. Just okay. a limited amount. Okay. And what he says that those money kept him surviving. So, so if you had five pound to buy your shopping and you owe that man five pound over there, mm -hmm. what would you do? Give a pound and keep back four. So it's fair to say then what 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 your father provided was greater than uh, 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 greater than money for the artist. That's right. He, he created because what's happened now. Um, these artists are making money and living off the studio one songs. Yeah. Even if they've made one hit, they're still out there making money. Bob Andy has a problem with us. Basically, if you think about it, <clears throat> he was paid for it. He never molested none of these men, where they shout out, but we was a child. But you were a hungry child and yeah. you had probably not at home. You probably never had nothing to eat mm -hmm. and whatever you signed up on, he never forced anybody. It was all done legally and yeah. properly. But years later, when before, because remember in the beginning, no one knew where it was going to reach. Yeah. So well, give him a five pound. <laughs> <laughs> give him a five pound. Well, I'm a five pound now. <laughs> yeah. But now, 50 years on, you wish I hadn't took the five pounds. So they've come back with a story now to gain. Okay. Yeah, okay. and you know, really, it's unfair. Yeah, because you've sold it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I get to the point that some of the artists might not have understood fully because of lack of knowledge of 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 the music business at that time. But it sounds like it was a necessity for them to have that that little piece of money right there and well, then in order to feed their family and survive. I've had a word with Marcia Griffiths, and this woman is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she said she didn't care, and a lot of them would tell they didn't even care about the money because they, they are eating from it. Now these are the decent ones who have a clean heart and a yeah. clean mind. Yeah. They're saying it gave them a career, and it, if they never had that, they could have been dead, or they could have been end up in prison, mm -hmm. or whatever. But it gave them a career, and it, it, at the time, you know what would have happened yeah. without the music. You know, it gave them a career, and. Um, it's not about you coming back 50 years later. You don't own it. It was sold out. Okay. Um, so really and truly, um, it's the only black home music still alive. Okay. Well, as far as I know, yeah. Um, well, I would like to keep it a black, black home, home music. Yeah, no good. racism, but I think no, no we need to hold on to what we own now. Definitely. We need to come together as black people, you know, and do what we have to do and work with other cultures that are enjoying our music. This Studio One is a is 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 created from wailing souls, as in as in the the, the, the energy of the people, yeah. which was a black man talks and dodge which is all the artists were black at the time. That's correct. I don't know if there was any white artists at the time. I don't know no, this. No, I don't, I don't Okay, so that. you're not saying nothing or doing nothing that's wrong mm. to yeah. say that you want to keep a black business black yeah. because it's, it's black part of black culture. It's a black one. culture, and yeah. it's a major part of black culture. when he yeah. created the ska, he, I think what it was, they, they couldn't get the music from America and there was not okay. sufficient so far. They decided they sat down because he was a genius, you can't take that from him. Mm. It never came from Bob, it never came from Chris. All these ideas came from my father. And then he worked with other people yeah. who made it possible yeah. to create that, the scatter lights. Don't forget that all these other fantastic musicians that were around him. And he, you know, just knew mm -hmm. what he wanted to do. And he just loved it. It wasn't for money, it was for the country the love of Jamaica and the love of his culture um, and he decides to form something yeah. to say let's do this it's like if me and you guys have come let me create something for us for our people and we create it together but it's my idea but I've picked some of your brains and we put it together yeah. but initially it's my idea yeah. but we build it now with some of your input and with all these artists it was it, it was great 
but they kept, they're on board as this entity. Yeah. They played a massive part. Even the one that all made the one hit, it was still a massive part. Definitely. Of the founding Definitely. of Jamaican music, yeah. 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 You know, and I think we should be proud as black people that this man created a sound for us that now many people are eating, living and become multi-millionaires more than my father. Mm. You know, the catalogue is worth, but at this time, I can't really tell you, but um, I want to keep it going. I really do. That's perfect. That's you know. Perfect. You know, I'm all working on some music of my own. Okay. And trying to keep it current and alive. And, um... 100% because it's the, it's the greatest influence, like we said earlier on, it's the greatest influence, one of the greatest influences out of Jamaica, Studio One, you know? And, you know, it'd be, it'd be lovely to see Studio One to, to be like a Warner or an EMI That's right. type, mm -hmm. type cornerstone, you know what I mean? Because it, in its own right, it is a cornerstone of Jamaican culture. You know, you saying that to me, I was having a lengthy conversation with my dad and he said, there's only so far he can take it mm -hmm. as an older man, because now he's up in age. And he says to me, it's for you guys, for his children, his children to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, my sister is signing off, soldiers. I don't approve of it, and I want to speak out of it now. Can you can you explain that a little bit more? Because I, I'm not even I'm not 100 familiar with what you're saying. Well, and soldiers sure has been not. signed off, like Carol has signed mm -hmm. soldiers to wishing me and my brother and a couple of the siblings wasn't in agreement with okay. it. Um, and um, why I'm here living in England, and I'm not a dummy, I know exactly what my father wanted. And I am gonna pursue that now, um, because I feel it's only right that we take up this baton for my father's sake, and, um, and for the black people's sake, because yeah. sooner or later you're gonna hear is somebody else created. Definitely. So if we don't take up the baton, it's beautiful that other people, Chinese, French, Brazilian, mm -hmm. everybody's embarking on this little music that was founded in Jamaica. I, I, I'm so proud that they're embarking on it, but it's black owned. Yeah. It's our music. And so what are, so, so what are soldiers really taking from the music, do you think? Well, the, the, there's one thing that they've got. Um, the LP Black Man Pride. And I think the cover looks ridiculous. Okay. They got some Pokemania man on the cover. Some stupid covers. And I'm thinking, what the Lincoln poop is this? Mm -hmm. Absolute rubbish. I think the cover, a Black Man's Pride. Are we talking uh, an Ellis Black Man's Pride? That yes, but yeah. they put this um, Pokemania man with him head wrap up like idiot. See. And I think it looks ridiculous. Why didn't he have a beautiful Rasta man, a beautiful Barlaid man, mm. like four different version of a black man? Then I could see it's a black man's pride. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, so when let's call them outsiders come and and, yeah. and they get involved, they don't understand fully the culture. The culture the, the is look, how yeah. it should look. How it should look because they're making it look like a gimmick. Yeah. Yeah, like. Then they have some stupid cartoon pictures of the, the thing. And I think it looks ridiculous. Okay. And basically, they need to sit down. But, you know, their lawyer, it's a conflict with their lawyer because she was working with my dad. When my dad died, that that um, entity should have finished. She should not be still working okay. or doing any deals because whatever deal she's done is in favour for soldiers. Okay. So that in my eyes and my brother's eyes, that all that is wrong, it's absolutely unlawful. So soldiers need to sit down, you know, because I'll be coming after you, lawfully. You hear that soldiers? Just sit down and have a conversation, let's work it out, because it's, it's really about, it's about the infrastructure of a great music that should not be seen and it, sh it shouldn't be marketed in the wrong way unless you've got people that understand you can't talk about rice and peas unless you, and, and understand it fully Thank unless you, you tasted rice and peas unless you're going to do the you rice understand. and peas with Jeremy done <laughs> <laughs> 
So that's him I do with the regular okay. music. <laughs> jerk rice. Jerk rice. Yeah. Hey, jerk so music. Just talk, talk jerk rice up the studio one year. <laughs> Let's keep it authentic, people. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me something. We spoke about um, many artists, but give me some of your favorite artists out of God, studio. God, I've got enough time because why? Um, just touch I on it. All right, I want to touch on this. I know John Alti is a wonderful mm. artist, mm. but in my eyes, Halton Ellis is the creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. That man is absolutely, his voice is awesome, mm -hmm. and I love his music. Definitely. Definitely. I think, you know, Janel came to England and watered his music down. Okay, for the market. For the market, yeah. where basically the first Janels, if you hear the orchestra on that, yeah, it's wicked, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Then I must say my woman artist is Marcia Griffiths. Oh. Um, Bob Andy is great, mm. but as Sugar Miner, wonderful Definitely. artist, performers, Delroy Wilson. Yeah. You know, and Burning Spear, Jesus, when we hear them people there, and Abyssinia, and all my artists, and God, me love with God. Because these music are so spiritual, and they yeah. make you feel... Definitely. You know, you're in touch with the mm. universe. Yeah. And um, the list goes on. Um, Ebb Tones, oh. absolutely fantastic. My most favorite one with Ebb Tones is Fatty Fatty. Oh. That's one of my most favorite okay. one. And Pretty Looks... Mm -hmm. Isn't all, yeah? Yeah. And um, I love Freddie. Freddie, not Freddie. Freddie McGregor. No, Freddie, Freddie Mackay. Freddie, the one that's in There's Your Picture. Freddie Mackay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's another. That's he died. I'm sure, it's Freddie Mackay. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, people, in yeah. the comments. <laughs> He's absolutely fantastic artist. Mm -hmm. And the list goes on. I think there's nobody on the studio one that you wouldn't scream and yeah. you know when you hear the music definitely but um i know those are my favorites yeah those are my definitely. favorite culture is more burning spears i okay. don't chat a lot of pop now yeah and um <laughs> oh, gosh. but yeah well he's given that i'm a dad and you gave him the chance come mm, on okay. abyssinian absolutely fantastic yeah and you know it, the list goes on. Yeah, definitely. The yeah, look, it's extensive, extensive. Very, very. Be, um, the cables were very good. Group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely good, you know. One thing I do know is that they had, the, they had, the, they had the, um, many artists was influenced by the, the American sound. And what I feel like your, your father, Don Cox and Doug, done was create That's, his own version. Yeah. Well, all right, what he did, he looked at America and thought, right, we can create this in the in my country yeah so what he did he took the music from america gave it to the artist no disrespect and because a lot of it w became famous mm. by studio one yeah sea of love no 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 and the list goes on again yeah and then he, the whalers where everybody um because even if there was a law really and truly money supposed to be going back to my father because he was the one that formed it bob marley and the whalers he gave them the name and he named reggae reggae not some other lunatics that's trying to claim it it okay. was my father and there's a tape where he's, he says he called it reggae and the scar you know but i think what happens a lot of people pay somebody and they chat and tell them what they want to hear on camera yeah because they're doing it for to eat a mm -hmm. food mm -hmm. i pay you 200 pound and just can you say this yeah. on camera and yeah. they do and it's, it's not the truth yeah sell it out really they're selling it out mm. so basically um <coughs> There's a lot of greats. I'm not knocking Bob Marley because he's fantastic. Yeah. He's good. But I wouldn't say he's the best. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say he's the best. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cultured people in Jamaica that's really the business. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Mona. I get it right, yeah? You got it right. It's Mona. <laughs> oh, shit. What, what are you up to nowadays? Babe? Where are we what am I up to? Where am I taking this? this? Well, um, you, everybody knows I got this court case with my sister. Not because we wanted to have a court okay. case. Not because okay. we wanted to, because in my influence, what should have happened, my stepmother, no, my dad, should have been really what my father wanted. She should have played it out. Mm -hmm. And I've always said you couldn't have loved my father if you didn't want to follow the man's wishes, because there was a will but they scribbled off Junior's name. So then it was a long haul in 
in the courts. It's still in courts, so I can't say too much, but anything that I'm saying is public knowledge. Okay. So now we, hopefully this year, next year, but I am pursuing um, uh, with uh, um, my partner, Richard Calvert, um, we're redoing some of the music. Wow. And this is in memory of Cox and Dart, so look out for that LP. Perfect, and perfect. we're also doing uh, Ansel Collins Plays Studio One. Okay. And we're looking also to do a Studio One tribute, where mm -hmm. we're going to use a few of the old artists, but get some new artists doing the tribute bands and I think that would be awesome to see some young young guys yeah. showing down some foot and you know mm -hmm. that would be perfect that's what my perfect, plan is perfect, that's what's perfect, going perfect, now perfect, perfect. and yeah. also the Cotson Lounge where it's basically named after my father to keep his name alive that's what I want to talk about just for a minute elaborate on the Coxon Lounge what is the Coxon Lounge the Coxon Lounge it's it was formerly called the Albion mm -hmm. And um, as you all know, I lost my brother, I lost my two sons, but, and recently my last, my oldest okay. son, where it was very painful. So and during that, I developed cancer. I've overcome it, but it's mashed up my tissue, so I'm not physically well. You don't, you look beautiful, you look perfect. I know, but I'm drinking sour sap leaves three times a day, okay. and I'm drinking the merengue, <laughs> yeah, that people. and all these other things to <laughs> keep me, pharmacy. because I have to keep myself alive, <laughs> yeah. and to, but the Cups and Lounge is basically a place of entertainment, mm -hmm. it's for mature people, Okay. not say all people, but mature yeah. people, yeah. Yeah. Um, people that don't want the nonsense or the violence or you know, that yeah. can come in, you know, if you want to sit down, sit down, listen to the music. Mm -hmm. If you want to get up, get up and go on the dance floor, let your hair down. Because when we do have a little venue, I tell you people dance and throw them some food. Okay. You know, so it is a nice venue to eat, dine and, you know, there's okay, like the a restaurant there. Yes. Wow. And basically you'll see with the writing on the wall. So basically, we'll be there. So the history will be there. So nobody can tell me about his Trojan mm -hmm. or okay. his Bob Marley or it's whatever Wally or whoever they want to <laughs> give, the, 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 give it to. We need to yeah. remember it was Clement Seymour Dodd that mm -hmm. founded the reggae music and he did it out of love. Perfect. Tell everybody where it's at. Where, can we, where, where is this? Um, Cox and Lounge. Lounge. We are at 23. Aston North Road, Birmingham 6 4 DT, and it's you must come and support the cause. Mm -hmm. Put on a bad mind because sometimes when black people doing anything, we we'll have up jealousy and think mm -hmm. are different, you know. Because again, as my father, it's not about the money, it's keeping the name alive and also to generate something for black people to own that it looks beautiful mm -hmm. and. Um, you can come out, enjoy yourself. There's lots of free giveaway from the can dance and the can with a little money. Yeah, okay. Well, present gifts, we give out <laughs> yeah, gifts. Yeah, that's perfect. It's, it's absolutely awesome. That's perfect. That's it's perfect. awesome, yeah. And also, it's it's also designed because years ago, I wanted to do Reggae Have the Lick, okay. where I'm keeping the studio one sessions, remember I said, yeah. the, the tribute bands. Yeah, that's right. So hopefully in the next few months, I'm going to get that out where we'll put the music where they can download it. And if they can rap and they can sing, mm -hmm. whatever, it's like X Factor, but it's reggae at the lick, basing off the Studio One beat. We will find these talents where we'll then produce them and get them out there. So okay. that's something to look forward to. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, in Jamaica, a reggae adelic, but in English, it's reggae at the lick. <laughs> <laughs> you get that, people. Yeah. So, listen, Moana, we're going to leave it there, okay? Okay. All right. I know there's so much more we could touch on and everything, yeah. but it's been a pleasure talking to you as from my heart. It's an honor to meet you because the influence that Studio One's had on my life mm -hmm. personally. You know what I mean? Studio One's a music that my mom used to play. I think Studio know? One had an influence on everybody's definitely. life. Definitely. You know, memories of your mom playing the music. Yeah, so definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So there you have it, people. All right? The daughter of one of the greatest icons of music out of Jamaica, Miss Mona Dud. 
Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. All right. God bless you. So blessed love people. Until the next time, we are out of here. Dancing, clear, quick fire interview. Well, this time is a conversation, but you know it, go already, people. Blessed love. Boom.